In August 2022, South Korea's Seoul metropolitan area experienced a record downpour. More than 30,000 homes and stores in Seoul were inundated by torrential rain. Homes that suffered especially harsh damage were semi-basements. Affordable units, often inhabited by low-income residents. Some victims lost more than their belongings. Unable to escape, a number of residents died. Semi-basements weren't originally constructed to be permanent homes. Roughly 200,000 Seoul households currently live in these accommodations. Two days after the torrential rainfall, the government of Seoul made an announcement. But the government hasn't announced any effective measures providing alternatives to semi-basements. This episode focuses on semi-basement residents, who are a reminder of South Korea's wide income gap. Kwanok District suffered some of the worst flood damage in Seoul. At this car wash, the owner's vehicle was partially submerged in water. He had no choice but to scrap it as junk. In this district, more than 30,000 people live in semi-basements. Out of all the districts in Seoul, this one has the highest number of semi-basements that suffered flood damage. We visited one such family. This is you. She lives together with her husband, Kim. Kim migrated from a rural village to Seoul in his 20s. Ever since, he's lived in semi basements for almost 50 years. Semi basements have little sunlight, bad circulation, and heavy humidity. In some corners of the rooms, water tends to pool up. The couple experienced unprecedented damage in the flood this August. Mori 
가버리고 막 물이 타고 올라오더만 그, 그, 저, 그, 호수법을 하는데. 그래, 안 돼가지고, 그 다음에 저, 저, 전기를 그 뭐, 차단했죠. 전기 차단하면 사람이 위험하니까, 네. 그래, 내가, 거기서 문을 열어서 놓고서 집사람 보고 빨리 나간 집사람이 요 난장가고 요 파지면 열이 그때 나갔던 거지. 나오고 그 다시 못 들어왔지. Realizing the danger early, Kim had opened the front door. Thanks to that, the door wasn't sealed by water pressure, and they were able to escape. Afterwards, Kim spent two days draining the water with a pair of pumps. The couple repaired their floor and wall with assistance from the district office and their landlord. Three weeks later, they were finally able to return home. You took us to another semi-basement dwelling where a tragedy occurred. Three members of a family that lived here perished, unable to escape. There's a particular reason for this high number of flood vulnerable semi basements. The history dates back to the Korean War, which started in 1950. As the conflict with North Korea continued, South Korea began debating the need for air raid shelters. To prepare for emergencies, the South Korean government built air raid shelters in cities throughout the nation. In 1970, it became a requirement for all newly built homes to have basements. Around this time, Seoul experienced rapid economic development, leading to an annual influx of 400,000 migrants from rural areas. To resolve the housing shortage, the government allowed basements to be legally used as homes. South Korea continued to enjoy high economic growth until the 1990s. Due to redevelopment projects, countless people were evicted. Those who were displaced also had little choice but to live in the affordable semi-basements. Che Eun-yong, who studies the housing situation in South Korea, criticizes the nation's policies. 서울은 그러니까 우리나라는 뭐 아까도 말씀드렸지만 개발 중심의 개발 지상주의가 굉장히 오랫동안 어, 팽배해 왔고 그러다 보니까 그 저층 주거지 저렴한 주거지를 없애고 값이 상대적으로 비싼 아파트를 공급하는 방식의 개발을 끊임없이 해왔거든요. 그냥 개발뿐 아니라 그 개발로 인해서 피해를 입게 되는 분들에 대한 주거 대책. 
이게 같이 만들어지고 해야 되는데 근데 개발의 속도가 너무 빠르다 보니까 그런 것들은 지금 신경 쓸 겨를이 없었던 거죠 한국 사회에 그냥 일단 개발을 하고 거기에 살고 있던 사람들이 삶이 파괴되거나 더 나빠지거나 라던 것들은 좀 신경을 쓰지 않고 하다 보니까 결국에는 판잣집이 지하나 고시원 옥탑 이렇게 다른 형태의 열악한 주거 형태가 된것 아닌가 싶습니다. The government of Seoul had made an emergency announcement about semi basements two days after the record flood. 대표적인 침수 취약지이자 열악한 주거 형태인 반지하 지하 주택을 없애 나가겠습니다. Currently, approximately 200,000 households in Seoul live in semi basements. And yet, Seoul decided to forbid the construction of semi-basement apartments and eliminate the use of existing apartments within the next 20 years. A real estate agency that had done business in Seoul for more than four decades commented on the current housing situation. This agency offers numerous semi-basements in addition to regular homes. Agency President Chon Chaik explains that real estate prices have surged in recent years, making homes difficult for citizens to afford. Here, 근데 그게 올라간 게 꾸준히 올라간 게 아니고 작년부터 올해까지 그때가 제일 많이 올라갔어요. 음. points out that as apartments are developed, the number of semi basements is steadily decreasing. 예전에는 아파트 짓기 이전에 빌라까지도 지하들이 많이 있었죠. 지금은 대부분 다 아파트로 변하는 추세라서 이제 점점점 지하 없어질 거예요. 요즘에 빌라는 1층 여기 1층을 다 주차장을 많이 해요. 주차장을 많이 하기 때문에 지하가 점점 없어져요. Under these circumstances, it's becoming harder to find locations to introduce to low-income house seekers. Yu continues to live in her semi-basement. With prices skyrocketing recently, her financial struggle has grown even worse. Yu 
You earns extra money by collecting discarded cardboard boxes to sell to recycling shops. You and her husband Kim have a son. However, they can't expect help from him, as his family is also in hard financial straits. Kim had been working at construction or demolition sites in the old town of Seoul since the 1970s. He devoted himself to urban development projects promoted by the state. But after damaging his hearing there, he's been unable to work for the past eight years. He and his wife now receive 580 US dollars a month in public assistance and disability payments from the government. But after paying for medical bills, food, and $140 in rent, they're barely scraping by. The South Korean government provides public rental housing as a more affordable option, but it recently announced it will cut the associated budget by 25% in 2023. This is expected to reduce the construction of new homes by 60,000 next year. On October 1st, residents of Seoul held a demonstration. They implored the government to solve the housing crisis. A performance was staged to express the lack of homes in Seoul where residents can reside securely. More than 300 people participated, proving that the flooding had revealed a serious inequity in housing. 뭐 서울에만 36만 명이 지하에 살고 있는데 이분들의 목소리가 사회적으로 잘 들리지 않고 이분들이 가지고 있는 이 문제를 해결해야 되는 게 정치적인 압력으로 가지고 가져 가, 정치적인 압력이 되지 않는다는 게 가장 큰 문제인 것 같아요. 그분들이 정말 죽어서야만 죽어야만 사회가 눈을 돌리고 여, 저기 여전히 사람이 살고 있구나라고 느끼는 거예요. 예산을 투입을 해서 이 문제를 해결하겠다. 돈을 투입해서 사람 생명은 살리고 보자라는 그런 정책이 좀 나왔으면 좋겠습니다. While the government does little to address the housing issue, the private sector has begun taking measures. This project involves providing rental homes known as social housing. Under government assistance, 
private companies make rooms available with affordable rent. This home was made by renovating a hotel two years ago. The kitchen and meeting rooms are shared spaces. To be eligible to live here, one's income must fall below a certain level. A lottery was held among the many applicants. The residents here are mainly young people, students, or those who have just begun their careers. One resident showed us his room. This is a studio with a loft. The rent is $250, about half the rent of other studio apartments in the neighborhood. Pak ming Yu moved into this room a year ago. After relocating from outside the city, Pak had lived in semi-basements for two years due to the expensive rent in Seoul. This is the building of the company operating the social housing units. Since 2012, it's built 14 apartments specialized for groups such as the elderly, the young, and people with disabilities. Company president Yi Kwang Seoul believes adverse housing environments are hotbeds for various social issues. He hopes to expand his business, but the recent surge in real estate prices poses a major hurdle. 개발하는데 굉장히 리스크가 많아지고 또 추가 개발하는데 어려움. 지금 말씀하신 것처럼 뭐 땅값이 올라가서 가, 가지고 새로운 땅을 가지고 사서 개발하기에는 너무 너무 이그 이, 이익을 맞추기가 그러니까 사업 수지를 맞추기가 굉장히 어려워진 거죠. 그래서 특히 서울에는 그런 어려움들이 굉장히 커지고 있다. As the flood raised awareness of housing problems, a member of parliament held a hearing. Semi-basement residents, lawyers, and researchers of poverty issues were invited to provide various perspectives for future policies. People in squalid living conditions are by no means limited to semi-basements. Some build huts on rooftops, while others live in greenhouses. Including residents of semi basements, roughly 850,000 households nationwide are believed to live in these types of accommodations. <laughs> Dwellers of greenhouse homes also suffered massive flooding damage. Semi basement residents such as you voiced their opinions as well. 
내가 70평생을 정말로 남한테 나쁜 일도 안 하고 우리 아저씨도 그렇고 남을 위해서만 살았는데 왜또 이런 집을 들어가야 되겠는가 이런 서름에 말 한마디 위로가 필요한 건데 저희가 돈이 없어서 반대에 살지만 누구한테 돈 달라고 손 내민 적 없거든요 오히려 더 열심히 사는 사람들이에요 근데 피해는 저희는 열심히 산다고 하는데 피해는 정작 없는 사람들이 더 봐요 반대 사는 게 제, 쟤는 아니잖아요 에이, 물만 봐도 다 더러운 것 같아 물이 아유. 그리고요 뭐라도 내가 시쳐서 해먹어도 끓임직한 게 많아요 정아주 물이 올라왔다고 생각을 하니까 The couple return to their normal lives, but still suffer flashbacks of the flood. And yet they have no choice but to go on living in a semi-basement apartment. 앞으로 물안 들어온다는 보장 없어요. 다 없앤다 그래요. 그러니까 없애는 게 맞지요. 근데 우린 돈 없잖아요. 진짜 지하 다 없애면 우리 같은 사람 진짜 갈데 없지요. 정부에서 해결 안 해주는 거 내가 원망했는데 뭐별 적이 없잖아요. You and Kim applied for public rental housing six months ago, but have received no news of feasible accommodations. If the government budget is reduced and fewer homes are built, competition is bound to heat up even further. All they can do is wait in the hopes that they'll be rescued from the depths of their current existence.